Okay, so I'm going to begin this second part of the cell um, lecture series with talking about energy. Um, there's an awesome, awesome number of pictures and descriptions within your book that I want you to reference because I think it breaks it down um, where you can understand it best. Uh, it begins on page 69 and it's figure 3. Uh, point two three and here it shows you where you have glucose and oxygen are required for cellular respiration what are they broken down into well they're broken down into carbon dioxide and water and this is our tried and true what you've learned since living environment what happens when we take in that glucose and that oxygen cellular respiration we require energy in order to churn that cycle uh, to begin it we make 38 excuse me, we make 36 ATP. Um, what do we need that work, all of that energy for? Anabolism, transport, muscle contraction. So all cells need your energy that you're making to sustain life. ATP is the most important energy storage molecule. Cells constantly use the ATP, renewing it, the supply, generating it again. Um, and this is just your basic chemical structures for uh, adenosine triphosphate or ATP. <clears throat> so the types of metabolic pathways are anabolic, um, biosynthesis, this is the making of complex molecules like polymers and monomers, where we're making proteins from amino acids. It requires energy. Catabolic pathways are the degradation, okay? This is the breaking down of big molecules into things that are small. When this happens, we release energy. And here is where we could talk about Gibbs free energy. And again, as you move through your college career and you choose to continue in the field of biology or science, human biology, you will learn more about that if you haven't already. Gibbs free energy you may have learned about in chemistry as well. So we're breaking down that glucose um, to energy, and we, I already mentioned that. So, the synthesis of cell structures, what does that mean? The making of cell structures. We have macromolecules, which we learned about in our chemistry unit, um, carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. We know amino acids are the building blocks for proteins. Three fatty acids plus triglyc um, yeah. Three fatty acids plus a glycerol makes up a lipid. Carbohydrates are your building blocks for starches. Anabolism requires energy. So here we go from bottom to top. Simple things are made into larger things. Requires energy. End products here, you have CO2, which is your waste. That exhalation is where that waste is gotten rid of. Um, catabolism is that reach. Catabolism, catabolism, however you want to say it. Um, so our energy are carbohydrates, lipids, and protein, proteins. And this week in lab class, um, we'll learn more about who provides the greatest amount of energy per, per gram. So the metabolic pathways can be either linear or cyclic. Glycolysis is more linear. Krebs cycle is cyclic, as we can see here. Um, <clears throat> coenzymes are important here. In order to generate or churn that cycle, the coenzyme is NAD+, or NAD. A lot of times people it's referred to. Um, energy of cells resides generally in the bonds. We learned that also in the chemistry that you just studied, that those electrons were that bonding, whether it be covalent, hydrogen, or ionic, that's where those the energy resides. And when we break those bonds, we're releasing the energy. So as you learned in chemistry, oxidation is that removal of electrons. Reduction is when we're adding them. Your carriers are the NAD and the FAD. They reassemble, resemble shuttles almost that are locate, loaded and unloaded with electrons and hydrogen. So you have your hydrogen or your proton carriers and you have your electrons. Um, the carriers are commonly, as I've already said, those coenzymes called NAD and FAD. So let's talk about aerobic respiration. The big picture is that we have glucose with oxygen. The oxygen makes it aerobic. Our end products, our waste, is carbon dioxide, which we exhale, water, and ATP. There are three stages. You have glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, 
and the electron transport chain in glycolysis. That is going to be on page <coughs> 70 in your book. Um, it breaks that glucose down into the pyruvate. Okay, so it's important that you note that at this time. Then we move into the Krebs cycle. Um, the Krebs cycle produces that energy-rich transport molecules. And finally, we have our electron transport chain that produces the many ATP. So if we're looking on page 70, you can see where your glucose, uh, you begin that glycolysis, that linear um, process. You have to use two of the ATP in order to continue the generation of that cycle to create the three carbon pyruvate. So you create from one to six carbon, here you have it, <coughs> you create two three carbon pyruvates. So here um, another great picture from your book and I believe that is on page 69, yep. Um, so here you have your energy, here's your glycolysis, you have some ATP that's made. Then we move into the mitochondria, which we talked about, I've talked about in that first lecture as being the powerhouse where the most of the energy is made. We have a preparatory step here, and that preparatory step on page 70 you see where you have the pyruvate, carbon dioxide's given off, you have your coenzyme, the NAD with the proton uh, carrier there, making your acetyl group, we add in coenzyme A, and we end up with acetyl-CoA. We then move into the citric acid cycle, and that's one of the bigger cycles, okay? Here we'll see um, the NAD again and the FAD. Uh, one turn generates one carbon, two carbon dioxide, excuse me, one ATP, three NADH, one FADH2, and one ATP. That's also known as the Krebs cycle. Your electron transport chain <clears throat> is bigger, in fact, and um, this is where the bulk of your ATP is going to be created. The picture on page 72 is, shows a really great um, depiction of those hydrogen ions. Uh, the protons and how they move through and where the NAD and the FAD come in to help move those along to open and close uh, in the, pro the proteins um, in the production of those electrons. It also shows where the involvement of that ATP synthase to create the ATP. So as I said on page 69 glycolysis is taking place in the cytoplasm. These reactions are catalyzed or begin because of enzymes. There isn't oxygen required here. So we have that glucose and I said that's six carbon broken down into your two pyruvate, that's three carbons. What is my yield? Two ATP, two NADH, they carry those uh, electrons and the hydrogen ion, um, protons, two pyruvate. Um, it's important to note here, if oxygen does not become present at the end of glycolysis, it trips into fermentation. So here is another, I'm not gonna walk you through this. Um, you can read through this, it's just kind of would be me repeating myself. Now the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondria. Preparatory reactions, you need those two pyruvate. They're converted, as I already stated, to two acetyl-CoA. NAD is reduced and becomes NADH. Overall, with two turns, what do you get? 8 NADH, 2 FADH2, 2 ATP, and 6 CO2. And as I stated, that is on page 71. And with two turns, I talked about the one turn, and now I'm giving you what the two turns gives you. Okay, and that's pretty much laid out there for you to review. <clears throat> Here is that cycle again. Um, another great picture, kind of gives you the overall with the carbons, um, where your NAD and NADH with the carbon dioxide coming off. 
Uh, you have the ADP to the ATP, and here's your FAD. Great depiction. Now let's move into the electron transport chain. Again, this occurs in the inner parts of the mitochondria. We talk, I talked, pointed those parts out when I was talking about the mitochondria geez, in the first lecture. So we have our coenzymes giving up electrons here to transport. NADH is three ATPs. FADH gives up two ATPs. The final electron acceptor is your oxygen. And I want you to please, please, please review page 73 and 72. Um, this gives you the whole outlines of where your ATP is made, used, the electrons, and so on. Um, this is where you have that H plus gradient, and that is the protons that is driving that production of the ATP synthesis. So here's our summary. Glycolysis, you have two ATP formed with that substrate level phosphorylation. Krebs cycle in the prep, you get two formed by the substrate again. Electron transport phosphorylation gives you 32. Okay, so that kind of gives you the overall. Oxygen, as I said, is important in generating, moving to the next step from glycolysis to the Krebs. Um, oxygen withdraws spent electrons from the electron transport combining with the hydrogen to form the water. And we know that is a byproduct. So what happens if it's depleted? Well, there are three different metabolic systems we have at our disposal. Uh, we have this called the phosphagen system. Uh, when we have maximal muscle activity, it's used uh, in power surges, such as like the 25 meter dash. Your lactic acid is uh, for 30 to 40 seconds. This is intermediate athletes. And then we have our aerobic, um, which is unlimited time. As long as you have nutrients, um, this prolongs the athletic activity activities such as your marathons. Anaerobic respiration, lactic acid fermentation does not require oxygen. So what happens is, is the NADH passes the electrons directly to the py pyruvate and lactic acid is produced. Okay, so that ends us, uh, takes us to the end here of our lecture. And um, I hope you uh, learned a lot. If you have any questions, let me know.